Avi, you famously have uh, studied the universe from its first stars 30 a million years or so after the Big Bang to the end of the, of the uh, uh, stars uh, exhausting all their energy 10 trillion years from now. But I want to be more, uh, uh, more specific and, and tailor it to our time because the last uh, 25 years or so, we've seen this enormous explosion in the study of cosmology. We call it precision cosmology because all the data. From your perspective now, having dealing with all aspects of, of the study of astronomy and the universe, if you project another 25 years, the next 25 years, what are the kinds of questions that you can legitimately focus on that we can get answers to? Right, so there will be uh, probably a significant uh, chunk of the effort uh, continuing in the same direction where we were successful. Uh, in other words, refining the measurements of the cosmological parameters to the second decimal point. Uh, and the, although that's a respectable uh, occupation for many cosmologists, yeah. uh, I find it rather boring <laughs> unless we would find anomalies. If we find something unexpected from measuring to high precision the cosmological parameters, then it would be indicative of new physics. And one possible example is that we will discover that there is another type of particles. Uh, uh, for example, in addition to the dark matter, we might find evidence for neutrinos having a mass. Mm -hmm. uh, we might find, a f through a refinement of those measurements, that the cosmological constant is not really a constant. Uh, but other than that, just measuring things to better precision is a clerical job. <laughs> uh, and I think the most exciting future lies with new messengers. For example, gravitational waves, uh, which we just started detecting. Uh, if we measure gravitational waves from uh, the collision of black holes throughout the history of the universe, we will le learn how black holes were assembled. So right now we have the LIGO Observatory uh, that is capable of detecting the mergers of stellar mass black holes, black holes that were made out of the collapse of massive stars. But a future observatory that is currently in the planning is LISA, and that will be in space. It will have the sensitivity at much lower frequencies to detect the mergers of massive black holes that we find in the centers of galaxies. So when two galaxies come together, mm -hmm. the two black holes make a pair, and they eventually uh, get closer and closer due to uh, scattering off the stars around them, there is some effective friction that brings them closer and closer, and eventually they coalesce. And LISA will be able to detect the gravitational ripples from such a process all the way back to when the very first galaxies formed. So we will learn about how black holes were assembled throughout cosmic history, and in principle we could also learn about cosmology in the process, because these could serve as standard sirens, where uh, as two black holes come together, we use them uh, as a source that allows us to measure distances uh, in the universe. Uh, how about the study of, of life in the universe? What, what can you predict over the next 25 years or so uh, in terms of technologies that will enable us to, uh, uh, to assess whether uh, and how there may be life, primitive life, find on, on uh, exoplanets that we're discovering literally every day? So um, the easiest systems for us to study would be the ones in which the planet passes in front of the host star because then a fraction of the starlight goes through the atmosphere of the planet and we can analyze that part of the light uh, for the fingerprints of molecules that are indicative of life. And that's an, a relatively easy uh, thing to do. It's the easiest thing to do at first. Uh, beyond that, we could look for um, the reflected light of the planet, even if it doesn't pass in front of the star. We could also, in principle, send, send spacecrafts that will take photos wow. of <laughs> habitable planets. <laughs> and I'm working on such a project <laughs> called Starshot, where we would uh, we aim to launch a spacecraft at a fraction of the speed of light, about a fifth of the speed of light, so that it would reach the nearest star system within our lifetime, within several decades. And that would allow us to see if a habitable planet is green 
blue or yellow, whether it has vegetation or mm -hmm. oceans mm -hmm. on it, by passing close to it and taking a flyby image of the, of the planet. Uh, beyond our nearby environment, uh, it will be challenging to detect life far away, unless it's intelligent. In principle, if you have a very advanced civilization, you could detect uh, its existence all the way uh, to the edge of the universe. For example, if that civilization is producing a beam of radiation that is powerful enough to uh, push on a sail that carries a very heavy spacecraft weighing a million ton, for example, then that beam of radiation would be visible all the way to the edge of the universe. And it may be the case that we, in fact, detected it in the form of fast radio bursts. <laughs> well, that's that's a very speculative, but but fascinating to be sure. Um, what are the kinds of questions that you would hope that you will have answered uh, by the time your career is finished? I would like to know whether we are alone, and uh, if possible, exchange a message with another mm. civilization. Now, it may not be that um, that signal will come from the vicinity of a star, from a planet, it may well be that uh, the most common signature of an advanced civilization is a spacecraft moving in between stars mm -hmm. in the interstellar space. Uh, and it's quite challenging to detect these faint signals that are being sent by spacecraft. Mm -hmm. But one day we might have the observatories that are sensitive enough to look for that. I very much hope that our civilization will demonstrate that we are capable of going interstellar, that we will develop the technology either within Starshot or another project where we will send a spacecraft during our lifetime outside of the solar system altogether and we can dream based on that on the possibility of visiting other planetary systems ourselves or at least sending 3D printers that will make duplicates of ourselves elsewhere. <laughs>